Eh, ahora vamos a, pelear, a tratar el tema de transparencia un poco más amplio. Si uh, Daniel... Uh, uh, Buen día, compañeros y compañeras. I will not speak in Spanish, although I like very much how Richard yesterday had his presentation with this nice English. So wait just a second. So, pensaba que en castellano si es en inglés, está Nuria ahí, que hoy no has casi currado nada. O sea, no, si alguien necesita traducción al castellano o al catalán, ahí. Okay, so I will not speak in Spanish. And I don't have this nice uh, American accent when I speak Spanish either. So, um, What I will do, I will briefly introduce uh, the Open Knowledge Foundation, which I'm working for, for those of you who don't know us. Uh, and I will also tell you what you could do with us. Uh, and then I will uh, bring a spotlight on the role of open data for transparency and ac accountability, basically. So about me, I have a background in computer science, media science, and I'm working for the Open Knowledge Foundation since 2009 uh, with, a, with a focus on open government, transparency, and participation. About the foundation, we're a non-profit, promoting openness in all its forms. So our sub-slogan is like, from sonnets to statistics, from genes to geodata. So we really don't only want to focus on government data, but we want all this data, information, and knowledge to be open. Uh, we build tools and community for everybody to use, create, share, mix, knowledge, content, and data um, free, free um, for any purposes. Uh, we are becoming a global network, so there's five chapters in the UK, in Germany, Austria, Belgium, Switzerland, and there's about a dozen of chapters incubating all around the world, including Spain, but also places like Greece, India, South, America, South Africa, Bosnia, uh, and Finland. Uh, but more important than the chapters is really the working group, so I encourage you to have a look on okfn.org slash working groups, and you will find we have about two dozens of working groups, they're all open, Some of them are big, some of them are small, some of them are very active, some of them not. Just have a look uh, if you're interested in, in one of them. Please join. Uh, we build communities, so we do a lot of events, Open Government Data Camp or the Open Knowledge Festival or the Open Knowledge Conference. Um, some of them are huge. Um, yeah, please have a look and, and join our conferences. And we do also do competitions, so this was the Open Data Challenge. It was the first pan-European competition reusing open government data, which resulted in more than 430 entries from all European member states and some little prize money there. Um, we also do tools, so we produce software like CCAN, and that's actually a tool for governments to publish data on the web, so it's a content management system for data, uh, and it features government portal like Data.gov UK and uh, from some other countries like Brazil, Finland, Norway. Um, we do also work on tools for visualization. Maybe you've seen Open Spending, which is an open source software tool you can use to visualize and analyze spending and budget data. It's also used by some governments around the world already. Um, but we don't only focus on government data, but also on all other kinds of information data. So for example, this is one of our uh, newest initiatives. It's called Open Glam. Glam is for galleries, libraries, archives, and museums. And we work together with these institutions to help them to actually open up the data for reuse. Um, we also do work on theory side, so we're setting standards. Maybe you have spotted the open definition, which is kind of a meta license uh, in which we define what we really mean by open. And you can use this, the, the definition to compare different licenses, being a Creative Commons license or other licenses, to their degree of openness and for their compliance. Uh, we do promote open data. And we do also uh, do guidelines so, um, for people interested in opening up data. We have created this Open Data Handbook. It's an online tool uh, which gives like step-by-step uh, -step introductions how to actually open up data. And we do also training. This is also a very new project. It's called the School of Data. It, together with the Peer-to-Peer -peer University, it's a free online course that everybody can enroll and get your hands dirty with actually wrangling with the data. Okay, that's so far the promotion for my, from my little uh, um, NGO that I'm working for. Now I want to have a look on the role of open government data for transparency. Obviously, um, just to recap, data is not a means by itself. It's actually data is really boring, and it only becomes useful if it is used by people. 
if it's con contextualized, if it's used for transparency and these, these other purposes. And to be uh, reusable, data needs to be technically and legally open. Um, as I said, the open definition kind of gives a guideline what we really mean by open, technically and legally. Uh, but to sum it up, it's a piece of content or data is open if an anyone is free to use it for any purposes without any restrictions. Um, I know, I know you have seen this already, and I don't, really don't want to be boring, but why, why open government data matters is, is, really, is really, I think, an interesting thing to look at. Briefly, to recap, uh, it supports citizens to hold their governments to account. It supports citizens to better understand why, how and why policy decisions are made. It supports citizens also to make themselves informed decisions and to engage with, with uh, their governments and play an active role in society. But it also supports governments and public administration to make better decisions um, and thus increase efficiency and effectiveness in government. And it also supports government citizens and other stake players, uh, stakeholders in society to actually collaborate and work together and find better solutions to, to fix the problems we face in our society. Looking at this, it almost looks like open data is the magic panacea that will you know, uh, stop climate change and eliminate corruption forever. Unfortunately, that's not true. Open government data is more like an infrastructure and a prerequisite for transparency and accountability and for citizen engagement participation. So, unfortunately, opening up, uh, no, opening up government data is so important, but unfortunately, once it's opened up, the real work only begins. So let's have a look on the state of play um, on open government data. You know there is quite a hype around open data, open government, and I think we have to manage expectations, be realistic, and also don't believe in the hype. Um, open Knowledge Foundation has started a global census to monitor the, the state of play on, on key data sets. So we have identified 10 data sets that we consider really key to be opened in every country, or country around the world. And unfortunately, the survey shows that very, very little of this data, even in the pioneering uh, countries like Brazil, like the UK, like even the US, most of these key essential data sets are not available as open data as of today. So there's lots of work to do. What's needed? Mm. Becky Hodge has actually done a, a study in 2010. It's called the Open Data Study. I recommend you read it. And she has done a lot of interviews with practitioners from around the world. And famous Tim Berners-Lee has uh, uh, given this quote. For a successful open government data implementation in a country, it has to start from the top, in the middle, and from the bottom up. So if one of these layers, like the top political commitment or the engaged and well-resourced middle layer, the skilled government officials, and the bottom-up uh, layer, which is civil society, and in particular these motivated, uh, what we call civic hackers. If one of these layers is not present, your open government data initiative is going to fail, most likely. So what could governments do to, to get their data out there on the web? First of all, they have to understand that open government data is not a technical problem. It's really about a cultural change. It's really about citizen engagement, transparency, and accountability. You guys have maybe heard about the Open Government Partnership, which is also a quite hypeful thing at this moment. Uh, I think it's a very powerful thing. It has the potential to really amplify our efforts to, to get more data opened, but it also introduces a certain risk which is this, this risk of you know, governments just signing up, ticking the box, oh, I've done this open thing now, uh, without any real commitment. So um, our friends from Global Integrity did an analysis of the uh, open government action plans, of the national action plans of participating countries in the open government partnership, and unsurprisingly they found that most governments really want to do e-government. They want to do this nice, shiny little websites, you know, that look good and they want to tick the box and say oh yeah we did this and most of them do not have any concrete commitments to serious legislative reforms such as freedom of information act such as anti-corruption measures and so on and so on so why is this 
And, and the lesson learned, I think, from this is really for governments, we should tell them, legislate, don't innovate. Governments have never been good in innovating, and I'm sorry for the government representatives in this room. They're simply not good at it. So they, what they should do, they should focus on the legislative reforms that's necessary um, uh, to open government up, and it's not cr uh, creating shiny websites. Um, finally, stating on that, on that theme from Tim, uh, from Tim O'Reilly, government should publish their data, become a platform, and then let, let others uh, do, do the interfaces. What we can do, I mean, we have seen so many examples, good examples, motivating examples this morning already. We should fight corruption. This is an example from Indonesia, which is kind of a wiki uh, to track corruption in the country. Um, it is really worthwhile, and we have seen an increasing trend in parliamentary monitoring organizations using open data and using ICT to hold their parliaments and their MPs to account. This is an example from Poland, which is really great, but I'm sure here in Spain we have also seen great examples. But one thing I, I think it's important here as well is that we, we should not always consider the governments to be our enemies, because not all of them are bad. There are people in governments that really want to do their job, job good, they, they want to, you know, um, do, do their work for society, and so we should identify our allies within the parliaments that can actually help in this transformation process, making governments more open. And I think a really good tool for, for, for helping parliaments themselves to become more transparent is the Declaration of uh, Parliamentary Openness, which you can see at www.openingparliament.org. It's a very new initiative that basically introduces, I, I don't know, 20 points or something like this, very straightforward re policy recommendations for parliaments how to become more transparent and open. If you haven't done so, please have a look at this and promote it in Spain for the Spanish parliament to become more open. Um, and of course, mm, as I said before, governments are not really good in, in providing all these services that we want. So some of the best public services we have today are not built by governments anymore. They are anyway built by private companies or civil society or individuals. Best examples like Fix My Streets, very well known. Um, and tomorrow, a lot of these services will go mobile. We, sh we should really not think and uh, wait for the governments to, to, to do all these services for us. So thank you. I think uh, we can do it. I'm very much looking forward to this um, positive agenda that we're going to develop as, as one part of this struggle to make our governments more open and transparent. Thank you. No, don't go, don't go. Questions, questions. Pregunta, <laughs> question? Yeah, you talked about uh, 10 critical or 20 data sets. Do you have a list of those data sets or where yeah. can we get them? It's, it's, only a, it's only a start. We don't, we don't think that's the final list or something. Um, if you go to census.opengovernmentdata.org, you will find the sets and um, the, the survey, and you, there will also be uh, like a form that you can help us to actually um, to, yeah, to, to, to complete the picture because we don't have the information for our countries now. Uh, is that clear? Can you repeat the, uh, the site, the world? It's opengovernmentdata.org, and there is a link which is called census. Solo una pequeña anécdota, seguimos con las preguntas. Hay un compañero islandés que hablará esta tarde luego y está flipando que no se pueden grabar los plenos. Está, no se lo puede creer. Hello. I wouldn't have liked to be in the job of the translator today with you because I was wondering if you could breathe because it was very, very fast, but very interesting. I, I wanted to know uh, how you interact with governments. I mean, from the Open Knowledge Foundation, do you have meetings with? Well, well, we, we are basically organized in working groups and the working groups have a lot of autonomy. So some of them choose to be quite confrontational with governments. Uh, for example, I'll give you one example from Germany. We have a freedom of information request side and really governments don't like us to do this. But on the other hand, we have other activities and other working groups that focus on, you know, kind of consultation. So yes, we, we talk with governments, we, we um, advise them, we do workshops with them, um, we try to help them basically. But sometimes talking is not enough and then you have to 
do it yourself without asking for permissions. Uh, it's sometimes more effective. Is, is that only in those five countries you mentioned in the beginning? No, the working groups are international anyway. So for example, we have a working group on open government data. It's completely international, so there's people from all around the world. Uh, but yes, the countries that have uh, chapters have, mo in most cases, have established, you know, uh, like an independent organization which has a relation uh, and a signed memorandum of understanding with the international organization, let's say. So it's part of your objective to interact with governments then? Yes, okay. definitely. Thank you. Um, just one very brief question um, about the open data. Uh, in Spain, we have a lot of different catalogs, open data catalogs, and they're very different. Some are very good, some other are really bad. Um, we're trying um, to call for a standardization mm -hmm. of, of those portals. I don't know if you know of any other country where there are so many portals and so many difference between the portals, and if you have any recommendation um, for us. Thanks. Yeah, it's, it's a tricky question. As said, governments usually are not very good doing IT, and if they do IT, then they spend a lot of money. So I think it's really not so much a question of the, the catalog itself, because, I mean, to be honest, data catalogs are a pretty boring thing. What they should, what governments really should do is put the data on the web so it's technically open and legally open. And the question what catalog they use, I, I, I really don't care so much about. Um, hi. See, no? Hi. I just wanted to um, say also to, for the audience, because it might be useful, uh, several things. As you mentioned, we are, uh, a group of us is creating, trying to create an open knowledge foundation chapter here in Spain and also trying to aggregate all these initiatives that we've seen this morning and that uh, it would be useful if we create together a common future for Spain. Also, you've mentioned the um, uh, openingparliament.org initiative, and actually there are two organizations in Spain that have actually signed this, uh, this uh, agreement, which is Que Hacen Los Diputados, that we've just heard, and also, and sorry for the publicity to my organization, but Fundación Ciudadana Cibio, uh, and I've just been told and officially accessing for Europe, who's talking next, has also signed this initiative. And um, on the other hand, um, and just this is a sneak peek for all of you later, uh, in Spain, the Fundación Ciudadana Cibio has actually implemented one of the projects of the Open Knowledge Foundation on spending. So where does my money go? For example, the UK version, and we have donde van mis impuestos punto es, and I'm gonna present it next. That's, that's very cool, thanks for this uh, addition. But I think it's really, I mean, it's really not only about having our, our organizations like civil society to, to sign the, the opening parliament pledge, but to go inside governments and identify these, al although it's only one or two, but these ch uh, change agents, these one or two open-minded people inside governments to, 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 to get them excited about the ideas of being more transparent and to maybe then, um, yeah, maybe, uh, you know, we're, we're still looking for, for the first parliament in the world to actually uh, underwrite or um, um, how, how you call that in English? Uh, um, yeah, undersign the declaration. Um, some of them are not performing that bad, actually. It's, uh, should, we should also reward the, 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 the ones who are doing good, even if, if they're only doing good in, in some parts. <laughs> 